This episode is sponsored by Agent CRM. If you're in sales and tired of paying three, four, or five different companies for your email, CRM, funnels, phone, follow-up automation, check out Agent CRM. It's an all-in-one tool that combines all that you need to reach out, nurture, and close your clients. They've got weekly support calls so you can get up and running in no time. Get a free 14-day trial by going to the link below in the show notes. Okay, sneaky, sneaky, uh, sneaky number three, right, right. Um, is not capturing the cash flow of your business, meaning the profit, and turning that into assets. Mm. So what a lot of people do once they start earning some good money is they start expanding their lifestyle. Uh, gosh, I've waited so long. I deserve this car, this house, this mm -hmm. watch, whatever. In my opinion, the goal and purpose of a business is to extract as much money out of the out of the world for providing the good service that you provide, the good products mm -hmm. that you provide, and then converting those assets, that cash flow, into actually income producing assets. Uh, that could be stocks, it could be bonds, it could be real estate, it could be you know whatever, but not capturing income and turning it into wealth hmm. so the idea that that we work for compensation whether that's self-employed or, or employed uh, that's just the cash flow part of it a lot of money will pass through your hands the question is how much of it do you capture versus how much are you committing to give to other people in the form of uh usually debt obligations and so this is going to sound a little odd but you know if you think about three levels of society um, what actually happens is comparatively, I'm not making any judgments, but comparatively poorer people tend to buy stuff. It's almost like trying to make you feel better. Uh, that's why they were up to the iPhone 14. Can you really tell me the performance difference between the camera? Uh, it's probably beyond the, the, the scope of human vision. Can you tell me the okay. difference in the computing power of the chip? It seems fast enough to me gives me what I need in my hand. Um, so people tend to buy stuff. Then they get a little bit more money. We'll call these people the broad middle class. Um, they tend to buy liabilities, which is kind of amazing. Um, <laughs> they buy houses with, you know, $8,000 mortgage payments. They buy cars with $4,000, you know, payment or, you know, whatever the number is. Um, so they tend to buy liabilities. Um, the, the wealthy or the people who become wealthy buy assets right mm -hmm. so they will buy um uh say income producing real estate they will buy income producing stocks you know uh, income via the divid excuse me the dividends of the profitable companies they'll buy mm -hmm. bonds right you can either loan or own like you could loan somebody money get paid interest you can own equities uh real estate whatever so they they convert that money into uh, uh assets so that should they desire not to work or desire to not to work sooner than what quote traditionally said you should work till you're 65 or 67 and you know live for a few years and die uh you know why not punch out at 50 because you've spent 30 years converting income into assets and so I think the reason I I feel that's a, an especially big blind spot for business owners is you have control that the w-2 paycheck person doesn't have you have the ability to add income and add revenue by making smart decisions uh, one of the examples I like to use is let's say somebody owns uh, like an HVAC company, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and they have they have a model, right? They know that if they have a truck with tools and a technician in it, and they do a certain amount of marketing, they're going to a certain amount of jobs, and those jobs have a certain amount of profit margin. Over the course of the number of year, the average number of jobs they do for a certain pro profit margin adds up to X amount of money. Mm -hmm. You could say... Well, you know, I don't need it. I don't need to add any more technicians. We're fine. But if I said, well, what if you hired two more technicians, equipped two more vans, spent a little bit more money on marketing? And let's say at the end of the year, each of those um, technicians generated net, net, net after all expenses, payroll, and everything, $100,000 each. So collectively, they're $200,000. I have two employees doing nothing but generating $200,000 for me to deploy into other areas of my life, my, my asset accumulation and wealth building plan. They're not there to 
cover expenses of the business. They're not there to make my accountant happy that I had a higher, higher uh, you know, EBITDA at the end of the year. They're just there to fund this other aspect of my life. Well, a W-2 person doesn't have that. When a W-2 paycheck person doesn't have that ability, but a business does. And so we need to see the deployment of our business assets also as a, a mechanism or methodology to create more personal financial assets outside the business so that should something happen to the business or something happen to you, mm. you've captured this labor, either yours or other people's, into more assets and more wealth. So I think it's this wealth extraction idea that's that's a real blind spot um, uh, for people. Uh, it's not about just covering the expenses and having some money left over. It's about an intentional creation of wealth and capturing and deploying that wealth that serves you for the rest of your, your life. Mm -hmm.